Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a few recent videos, we've been investigating various weather satellites. We've looked at polar orbiting low Earth orbit satellites from both the US and Russia, and we've looked at geostationary NOAA satellites also from the US. Now, most of the low orbit satellites, I've previously been looking at the VHF 137 megahertz frequency, which is used by both the Russian and the American satellites. Now I've also just started to look at a microwave frequency that some of these satellites also use in the 1.7 gigahertz range. That provides some of the same imagery but at a higher resolution. It's also a little bit harder to pick up. For the 137 megahertz VHF signals I use a QFH antenna which I have up on my roof. For the 1.7 gigahertz frequency I actually use a very similar smaller QFH antenna that I made in a previous episode lovingly duct taped onto this folding satellite dish that I got from a viewer and fellow ham. Thanks again to Chandler in 0 tor for trading me that dish. It's been really fun so far. Now in this video I'd like to expand on my 1.7 gigahertz adventures because that's relatively new to me. I haven't had much success with it so far. When I tried to record the Russian Meteor M23 satellite I screwed up the recording, I had the wrong format, I had the wrong frequency. I had read somewhere online that it was at about 1690 or 1694 megahertz. It turns out it's actually right at 1700 megahertz, 1.7 gigahertz. Now we'll probably try a couple different satellites in this video. Most of these polar orbit satellites come over twice a day. They're sun synchronous, so the way they circle the globe, they're basically always seeing morning and afternoon, about 12 hours apart. So we get each of these satellites approximately every 12 hours, which can be challenging if we miss it, if we screw up one signal, we have to wait 12 hours for that particular satellite to come back. And it might not be right on the same orbital path. Some tracks are better than others, some are right over the top of the house, others are way off to the side and we don't have as good of a signal. And since someone always asks, these are unencrypted satellites, they're weather satellites, so there's nothing really sensitive that they're sending down, and there's no reason for any real security or encryption on them. They're designed to be used by civilian weather contractors, by researchers, by pretty much anyone who can detect and interpret the signal. And that includes amateurs and experimenters like me. We've got our folding uh, C-band television dish here, and we've swapped out the TV l &B in the center for this little QFH L-band element that I made in the previous video. This is from a kit on eBay. It costs about $6 and is really frustrating to use because it comes with no instructions, no measurements, and yeah, I made a mess of it when I built it. I also have my Sawbird Goes LNA plugged in here directly behind the antenna element, and that's to maximize the signal, minimize any signal loss. Um, this LNA is designed for geostationary Goes NOAA satellites, but it works with pretty much anything that's on that 1.7 gigahertz frequency. We're powering that with a little USB battery bank. And then I'm using my Redneck Cyber Deck that I put together out of spare parts, which I use for all my satellite videos. This has a Linux computer on it, it has all my SDR hardware, all my satellite and radio specific hardware built right into it. And honestly it's starting to fall apart a little bit because I've been using it so much and I did kind of a rush job when I built it, so I probably need to rebuild it at some point soon. A few people have asked if I could walk through exactly what software and hardware I'm using for these projects. It's a little bit difficult because a lot of it's hacked together. As you saw, my antenna is made out of stuff that I got secondhand by stuff that I've duct taped together, stuff that I've kind of home built, so there's not a real shopping list of stuff you can go out and buy. In general, a big satellite dish is really handy for all kinds of stuff. Um, any radio signal will bounce off a satellite dish. The bigger the dish, the better the gain, the better the signal you'll get, um, but also the smaller the focal point. So you'll need to aim it more precisely. If you can find an old C-band dish out in somebody's yard or on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, I don't know if you're gonna find one of these folding dishes. They're pretty rare. This is like some leftover from the 80s. There are some new manufactured folding dishes like this. I'll throw that link down in the description. The website doesn't list any prices, which usually to me, if there's no price listed, I know I can't afford it, but who knows? As I said, I've got my homebrew miniature QFH antenna up there. That's connected to that uh, Sawbird Goes LNA. I've got wires from there going over to the CyberDeck where I have a RTL SDR Blog V3 software defined radio. And that's just a little USB dongle that has a radio receiver in it. Those are really cool. I recommend everyone interested in radio stuff, uh, ham stuff, satellite stuff, go pick up a software defined radio. You can get the really cheap ones on eBay for like $15, but this RTL SDR V3, it's a little more expensive. It's like $40, $45, but it's well worth it. It has a lot more features. It does more stuff. 
I really like it. The CyberDeck, as I said, is just a Linux computer made out of trash. The software I'm using the most is GQRX, which is kind of the entry-level noob software. There are other SDR programs that are more powerful. This one I just find easy to use, and it runs on this old hardware. I also use a program called SatDump, which is great for decoding all kinds of satellite information, and I'll throw that link in the description down below. I've been chatting with the author a little bit. They seem really cool. They're very helpful. Uh, they've been uh, giving me some advice and some hints, so that's really neat. That's on GitHub, so there's a lot of people contributing to it. I don't have a dish rotor on here, so as before, I'm going to have to manually steer this dish, keep it aimed at that satellite. And this is a low Earth orbit satellite, so it's going to be moving across the sky relative to me, giving me about a 10 to 15 minute window when it's overhead. And I'm going to try to keep the dish aimed at it for as much of that pass as possible. Okay, it's trying to rain again, and it's a little bit harder now. Well, Goonies never say die, so we found some cardboard to protect the computer. Alright, so we got basically nothing on that pass. There was maybe a little blip of signal here or there near the top of the pass, but essentially we got nothing. We did not get a signal, definitely not enough of a signal to run through sat dump. As I'm fond of saying, I am not an expert at any of this stuff. I am not a satellite expert, not an antenna expert. You're basically watching me learn these things right as I'm learning it. Now, as much as I love that giant folding dish that Chandler gave me, it's kind of inconvenient to go out there and hold the thing and try to move it around. Coincidentally, Chandler just contacted me again. He found another old surplus dish in his garage, and now it's in my garage. All right, well, this thing looks pretty sweet. Uh, it's definitely smaller and probably a little more manageable than that big one. It's a Cisco Aeronet 1400 um, outdoor wireless bridge. To me, a 20-year-old dish, yeah, that's got to be from the 80s, right? No, this is from 2003, so it's still 20 years old, but now I feel old. As I said earlier, a parabolic dish is pretty frequency agnostic. It will bounce any frequency onto your receiving hardware. You just have to make sure the active receiving element, the focal point of the dish, is tuned to what you're looking at. So I've definitely broken this in a couple places trying to take it apart. Chandler did warn me that this top uh, looks deceptively easy to take apart. It's got these little push tabs, so it looks like you can just pull this out, but he said, no, he tried that and he broke it, so... Okay, I thought maybe I'll unscrew this from the bottom. Well, no, that pulled something out from in here too. So, uh, definitely no user serviceable parts in here. To some extent, this is okay. I didn't care about the 5 gigahertz antenna element. I want that to be a 1.7 gigahertz element, so I was gonna pull this out anyway. This little guy is our actual antenna. It's got this little uh, C on one side, another C on the other side, and we basically just wanna recreate that with longer wires for 1.7 gigahertz. Well, this thing's definitely lighter and easier to maneuver than that big dish. This whole thing weighs less than the empty cardboard box it came in. And for the people who always ask specifications, this is about a 29-inch dish. I was going to throw this hot glue monstrosity onto my Nano VNA, but I forgot it only goes up to 900 megahertz. So I'm basically just winging it here on the tuning. Well, we're still not getting much on this. I know I've made some of my prior satellite projects look easy with just duct taping plumbing parts together and getting a signal, but this 1.7 gigahertz, this higher frequency stuff is a little more challenging, especially when you're at the duct tape and zip ties level like I am. Well, I'm not having much luck with this smaller dish so far, probably because I messed up uh, redoing the antenna element. I've ordered a different VNA that should go all the way up to 3 gigahertz, so I can open this up again, retune that, hopefully get that a little more efficient. When you're starting in a new hobby or expanding your knowledge of a hobby, such as amateur satellite stuff, there can be a lot of errors. There can be a lot of failure. There can be a lot of missteps. There can be a lot of frustration. But hopefully you're learning along the way, and at the end or towards the middle, you start to have some success and you'll learn something cool. All right, we're back. It's been a couple weeks. I've been on vacation. I've been working on other projects, but I now have the new Nano VNA and we're ready to get back into this HRPT project. People sometimes ask how I do these videos so quickly. Well, this isn't really quickly. Uh, I filmed the first half of this like last month and now I'm finally getting around to doing more of it. So just like our other Nano VNA, this is a vector network analyzer, which I mainly use it as an antenna analyzer. It does a whole bunch of other stuff that I don't understand. So I've hooked up the center element of my dish and we've got our little meter in SWR mode. So this thing I've made seems to be 
pretty good over at 2.4 gigahertz, so I've kind of made a Wi-Fi antenna. So I've definitely screwed up on making this antenna, and that's why we're not getting a signal from any of these satellites. I tried really quickly putting a new antenna element together with longer wires. I ended up with this crossed X-wing arrangement. There's always some kind of excitement. I was out here in the yard trying to do this video and hear a big crashing noise in the front and uh... I went ahead and bought another mini L-band QFH antenna. That's the Quadra something or other Helix. I'm still not super happy with these kits, but for a few bucks, I'll just keep buying them and screw them up a few times until I figure out how to make them work. All right, well, Donnie seems determined to help with this project. Um, this little antenna definitely looks different than the last one I made. I can't say it looks better, but at least it looks different. I made sure to do a left-hand circular polarization. The actual signal is right-hand polarization, but since it's bouncing off a dish reflector, the signal that the antenna sees is left-hand, so you just gotta put the windings backwards. So the satellite I'm looking for should be passing straight overhead right now, and I'm still getting absolutely nothing. I'm pretty sure my dish is doing something because I'm tuned into an Iridium satellite frequency and I'm seeing data on here. Uh, for some reason, I'm just not getting stuff with that 1700 megahertz band. I think we have to conclude that our little 30 inch dish here just isn't big enough for this use. All right, we're back to using the big dish with our new little miniature QFH antenna and a generous helping of hot glue and duct tape. This time we're trying a European meteorological satellite called MetOpB. And that should be coming over in just a few minutes, starting in the north and going to the south. This is really turning into one of those just complete failure videos because I've been working on this for weeks now and I have not seen a single HRPT signal. Now I'm still not 100% sure if I'm doing these stupid little L-band QFH antennas right. I still haven't found a definitive guide to how to make these, but I found one more suggestion online with some dimensions, so I'm gonna try to follow this one. All right, well I've made two more of these stupid L-band QFH antennas, a left-hand circular polarized and a right-hand circular polarized. Unfortunately, when I hook them up to the Nano VNA here, yeah, the SWR is terrible in the L-band. It's like four. This is where they're going now. Let's try one more thing while I'm out here. I made this antenna a while back, and this is just a regular old ground plane. It's supposed to be for UHF. Let's see if we can move that up to about 1700. We're gonna have to take off a lot of material here to get it tuned that high. All right, we're all the way down to one over 1.03 at 1700 megahertz. So theoretically, the SWR on this antenna is great. All right, with our little stick antenna, we are getting some signals from the GOES satellite, uh, GOES East. That tells me the dish is working, my focal point is working. However, every now and then the signal just drops out completely. So I'm gonna try to swap to a different computer, different software, different RTL SDR dongle, and see if that helps at all. Okay, well I'm finally getting some data off of a satellite, even if it's just text files off of GOES, which I've done before. Okay, I'm spending far too long trying to get this HRPT thing to work. I've put aside all my other projects, I've ignored all other chores, the yard desperately needs mowing, things desperately need to be put away, the garage is piling up with junk, but I'm out here every day with these satellite dishes. All right, I'm finally getting something. That's NOAA 19 HRPT signal. I'm using my phone with the N2YO website to track some of the satellite paths. I'll try recording that and see if we can run it through sat dump later. It's about 95 degrees outside, so that wasn't much fun for me or the equipment. We brought the laptop into the garage to cool off a little bit. We're gonna to try to process some of those passes. We fired up sat dump. We're gonna run our baseband recording through that. All right, we have an image from NOAA 19. After all that screwing around, after days and weeks of messing about, we finally have gotten that HRPT data off of a passing satellite. So I feel pretty accomplished. Even though it's a little scratchy, it's a little staticky, you can definitely see the spots where I didn't aim my antenna quite precisely enough. Since this is a higher bandwidth signal, this has a lot more data than the old APT signals that we can just pick up with a VHF radio. This has all kinds of stuff like cloud thermals, microphysics. I don't even know what half of this stuff is. I'm gonna have to do more research on the data packages this provides. And this really has been a classic Save It For Parts channel project because the thing that finally worked was to throw away the real QFH antennas that I bought online 
and just use one that I made out of coat hangers and putty a few years back. I wasted over half of this video trying to get those little helical antennas to work because I'd read online that you want a helical antenna for a circularly polarized signal and somebody online somewhere had said that a little miniature QFH in the L band would be great. None of those did a thing. I tried one more pass of NOAA 19 the next morning and got a pretty similar image. Honestly, I'm not very good at manually aiming these dishes. I keep wiggling out of alignment and I keep getting bars of static on the screen. So I think if I want to do this some more in the future, I'm definitely going to need to buckle down and build myself a large automated antenna mover that can track moving satellites like this, that can track other celestial objects. Basically, I need to build a bigger radio telescope which ties into some other projects coming up soon. Um, some of those are pretty exciting, pretty large, uh, but you'll have to stay tuned for those. I'm gonna call this video a success, even though it took quite a long time to get much. Um, I do have some more antenna designs I'm gonna play with. I do have some more things I wanna try in the future, uh, but we're gonna have to come back to that. Like I said, I think I'm gonna have to build a big antenna rotor azimuth elevation mount for some of those bigger satellite dishes. I am going to play around a little more with the GOES geosynchronous satellite. Maybe I'll put it back onto that little 30 inch dish and see if that works, but that might be the next video here. Anyway, if you sat through this whole video just to see my little bit of progress at the end, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.